Hello friends! I have been thinking so much about you guys, all of you. I'm just wondering how you guys are dealing with the heat. Is it really bad in your area? Welcome back to Safe at Homestead. I am so glad you decided to stop in and spend some time with me today. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Elena and I am mini studying on 1600 square feet in the desert of New Mexico. A very hot New Mexico these days. How is the weather in your neck of the woods? I know many areas are experiencing extreme heat. Drop a comment below so we can know what kind of temps you're dealing with. We have had triple digits for the past few days and the forecast for the next seven days is triple digits peaking on Tuesday with 104 degrees. So you can imagine I'm constantly checking the garden, checking outside. I am so glad that I have straw mulch because I think it is helping keep things cool and moist. Checking on the chickens all the time, making sure they have fresh water, giving them ice and putting the mister in their run whenever they need it, which is basically every day. Uh, so this week or this past week has been mostly about just little things that I do outside when I run outside for a few minutes, probably no longer than 30 minutes each time. And then I come back in and do something in here and then I go back out. But I will tell you, it's so hot that even a half an hour out there just takes it all out of me. I come in and all I can do is lay down and drink lots of fluids and maybe think about what I would like to be doing next. It really saps your energy. So you're gonna see um, some work on that flower bed that, well, the, the, the bed that I want to be a flower bed. There is no flowers in there, not really, um, but I keep working at it. Uh, you're going to see some changes in some of the beds. I've laid black plastic in some places. Uh, the garlic is all pulled up what else um, there's been some movement some progress on the chicken run project that has been a hard one for my hubby because of the heat uh, let's see I'm going to sprinkle some chicken videos in there just so you can see the girls and what they are up to uh, there's some video clips of critters in the garden as well and some of them I'm excited about and what else am I doing I did plant some seeds directly I said I wasn't gonna do that but I did and so I'm gonna share that with you so anyways it's just a just a little bit of this and a little bit of that I think there's a dinner in there too what we had for dinner all right oh and I have really been enjoying gardening in the evening like after seven o'clock the sun is going down the sunsets beautiful and even if I can spend just 30 minutes doing something out there because I have lights out in the garden I do that and it's really really enjoyable and uh, I feel better doing things out there at that time and uh, I am NOT dying of heat all right so let's take a look at these things just want to share with you what I've been up to hey guys so I am outside for a few minutes. I have been popping outside for a few minutes every day to do something because it is extremely hot. Actually, I have enjoyed coming out in the evening and because, because I have some lights and because we've had full moon, I have been able to do a little bit in the garden in the evening. Uh, the hubby is home and he's trying to expand the run. But it's so hot. I mean, he can only do so much, right? But he's almost finished with this area, as you can see, digging out the clay. We did move the hollyhock yesterday. She was right here in this corner, and we just moved her over here. She's looking a little droopy, but I think she will be fine. She'll bounce back this very large hollyhock oh, is going through a lot right now so we can move it to here okay so oh that breeze feels good 
time for me to go back in. I have just a lots of little clips of videos of different things that I've been doing. I'm going to try to put those together for you in a way that makes some sense. And uh, maybe later today I'll share what's for dinner. I wanted to do something special since the mister was home. Um, I hope you guys are keeping cool and being safe with this heat. And I'll catch you soon. Bye. <sighs> okay, so I am addressing this bed once more. I thought it would be my pollinator bed, a bed with lots of different flowers and yeah, uh, unsuccessful. I've put seeds in there multiple times. So I am thinking, even though I'm having my doubts about this Kellogg potting mix, because I've been reading some negative things about it, I just put a fresh sprinkle of it right on top. Um, of this bed again I'm thinking as I'm talking <laughs> I'm wondering if I should put a sprinkle of um, mushroom compost I might do that and then I'm gonna spread some seeds and then water again and see what happens I might cover it with uh, straw okay let's go okay I thought I had mushroom compost but it is steer manure and I don't think I want to put that here to start the seeds in so these are the seeds it's a I heart pollinator seed packet that I got from botanical interest so I'm just gonna spread it around and I'll wait till the wind dies down and then I will put another thin layer of the potting mix on top it's for it's a raised bed and potting mix um, formula and then I'll water it again and mulch. And then maybe I will get some flowers here. We'll see. Okay, so that packet only had uh, very few seeds. And they are mostly right here. So this middle part and this side didn't get any. I went inside and my plan was to take a bunch of different flowers, seeds that I have, and mix them all and make my own pollinator mix. But then I saw this. It is from 2020. It is three years old. But there's a lot of different flowers in here. I mean, will all of them have expired? I don't know. At the same time, I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to take a chance and I'm going to spread this well, mixed flower uh, packet and just throw it in here probably throw it over there too where I put some of the others because it's very sparse I mean it was with very few seeds and I'm just gonna fill this bed with this and see what happens I hope the bird can't do that I just watched this <laughs> lizard crawl right under oh I hope he's not stuck uh oh yeah, I think he's trying to find a way out. Actually, he didn't. I had to come over here and pick up the netting to let him out. Oh boy. Last year we had some netting on... Well, this... Hold on. That used to be a, a zucchini, tomato and zucchini. And I had netting over it and... Um, but the netting came all the way down to the ground and a snake got stuck in it. Here's that little guy. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> So I am out here planting a bunch of seeds. I did those flowers. Uh, I did some other flowers on a trail along with the cucamelons. And now I am doing these pole beans. What are they called? It's a blue lake. Blue lake pole beans. These little white ones. See here? This is the place I planted those flowers that are edible and great for tea. Only one came up. Um, so I am planting beans here. 
these are the stringless uh, pole beans and then the one that I'm going to plant in between is a Cherokee Trail of Tears bean and it's black so let's get that in okay so let me review what I just planted I have to remember so that I can go in and record it here this is one of the onion beds that's covered up. I have the cucumber melon and a pollinator vining flower. It's like a, it looks like a little mini trumpet flower. So that's what's here. Over here, what did I put here? I don't remember what I put here. But when I walk, when I go inside and look at the seed packets that are out, I will remember. Um, Oh, I know what it is. It's the yard long bean. So the yard long beans are here. I mulched everything lightly. I didn't want to totally cover it up. But I was hoping that uh, it wouldn't dry out as quickly if I mulched it. And then over here, where the random bean is, that's a. Um, there's that little lizard again. I think he's thirsty. Um, that bean that is a volunteer from last year and the one flower, vining flower that came up. What I planted here was two types of beans. I planted the Trail of Tears, Cherokee Trail of Tears bean and the uh, Stringless Blue Lake pole beans. So there are some areas where I'm going to be planting uh, some more beans but really I'm not gonna plant any much more without pre-sprouting I just felt like beans are such big seeds and they should they're not as delicate so I'm giving this little area a chance again I added soil just in case um, did the same thing here did the same thing here I added uh, some soil and then put the seeds in the soil. I also um, mulched this area where I put all the, f the pollinator flowers and by the way that thing that I thought was a remember I said that's probably the only seed that's come up and it's a Shasta daisy I think it's a sunflower and I say that because it follows the sun <laughs> so I think it's a it's a sunflower Okay, you guys, it is 90 plus degrees. I am, yeah, I'm feeling it. I'm not drinking, and that's a bad thing. So I'm just going to check and make sure that this thing is dripping for this watermelon. If not, I'm going to fix it, and then I'm going inside. I decided to cover this with a little remnant of the netting. Uh, it's not exactly protected. There's ways the bird can get in but at least it'll give him a run for his money It is Sunday afternoon and I have been here bemoaning my garden a little bit too much I think and um, I decided to take matters into my own hands <laughs> so as far as seeds not sprouting because of cool temperatures at night I think it's a little bit late in the game for that to be the reason why my seeds aren't sprouting I decided that it might be something related to the soil uh, the soil that I added this year so I'm just gonna go ahead and work with it and amend it a little bit I'll share that with you guys as I do it and as far as that bird I decided that I am going to use black plastic in the garden to cover it I know that black plastic um, creates heat and we are already in a really hot uh, area but I'm gonna go ahead and try that and maybe cover the plastic with 
straw to keep it a little bit cooler anyways I have some ideas I don't want to just sit around and um, feel helpless because my seeds won't sprout and because that bird keeps ruining my beds so uh, I did say before I don't remember if it's this video or the or um, one previous where I said that I would not plant anything without pre sprouting well I went back on my word I went out there the other day and planted some um, pole beans uh, this one is uh, Cherokee Tears planted that let's see the pole beans oh this one is Blue Lake I also planted the cucamelons and on the same arch with the cucamelons I planted this uh, vining flower little trumpet flower thing I thought the hummingbirds would like it and I also planted the oriental yard long beans why did I plant these without pre sprouting I don't know so I'm just gonna give them a few days I think the longest thing uh, that yeah this takes the longest to germinate 15 days 5 to 15 days which is a long yeah I don't know why I didn't say 10 to 15 days is it 5 to 15 days okay so that's the longest the rest are either um, 5 to 8 days or 6 to 10 days so I'm gonna look back and see when I planted these I'm gonna give everything about a week uh, no more than 10 days if it doesn't come up I'm going to pre sprout these and put replant them I don't know why I I planted them without pre sprouting anyways so what I just did because like I said I'm not gonna sit around and bemoan the situation is I went ahead and this bag has several baggies in it with peppers that I'm pre sprouting so I pre-sprouted this one is called tangerine tangerine dream this one is the sugar rush peach this one is just a mixed variety of hot peppers I did pepperoncini I wasn't going to do jalapenos because I figure jalapenos are pretty inexpensive in the store but I decided to go ahead and and plant them because I would like to make sriracha sauce and I don't often see red jalapenos which is what sriracha sauce is made from so I'm just gonna plant these and leave them out there till they're red and I did a giant Marconi I wanted to do the large red cherry and the habanero Caribbean orange but these I planted already all of them either in five gallon buckets and they didn't come up or I put them in that little cell um, that I bought those cells and I showed you guys that I was potting up beans and peppers nothing has come up in those and I am I am really shocked by that so I decided that I am NOT going to do that anymore I will always pre sprout and I won't make any exceptions unless it's something you just cannot pre-sprout something that's so super tiny okay so that is what I did so that's what's here and then this bag has beans and the beans that I uh, pre-sprouted are the Royal Burgundy and I just had enough to do this I was so happy that I did because I would have been really disappointed if I didn't have these so I need to buy some more of this because I am out of it now the other the other beans that I pre sprouted are the contender I just love this bean and I wanted so much of it and nope it didn't work so I am I'm not sure why my camera is so shaky uh, so contender and Kantari and the Maxabel Haricot and the Strike Beans along with the Royal Burgundy I pre-sprouted. You guys notice what I'm using to close up my um, packets is these little 
paper clips. I've tried everything, including the tape and the washi, and it's not easy. This is the easiest thing for me. I bought it for a dollar twenty-five at Dollar Tree, and I got I don't know a million of them. So it's a really easy way to close your beans so that they don't fall out. Okay, so that's all the beans that I did. Let's move on to something else. I wanted to do watermelon and cantaloupe. I already have some of this out in the garden. It's been a while, it hasn't come up, so I decided to pre-sprout some honey rock cantaloupe. And I have to search a little bit because I'm shocked that I don't have watermelon seeds. And if I don't, I am gonna go looking for watermelon plants. I, I'm not gonna start in I'm not going to buy seed to start at this stage of the game. Hopefully I have some and I don't have to wait for any to come in the mail. Okay, I just went looking around and I found this. And I think that I didn't read the label. I just saw it and it looked like a cantaloupe to me. So I, uh, and I just wanted to do the honey rock cantaloupe. So um, I didn't pay that close attention to it so I have this watermelon it's a tender sweet orange and I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get these pre-sprouted as well okay additionally I did several uh, a few different pumpkins I did the sweet meat squash which is like a pumpkin and this is so delicious and it grew so easily I had several of them and they also um, saved very well I think I used my last sweet meat in May it started to turn yellow and I decided to to use it so it lasted a good long time I also did these pumpkin what is it Connecticut feel pumpkins I think this is aren't these cute I didn't do these last year but I will this year uh, and then winter luxury and I wasn't going to do this uh, Cinderella pumpkin, but this was so beautiful in the garden last year. I still have one, believe it or not, it's still going strong. I need to do something with it. And it's so beautiful to have, so I decided to go ahead and try to grow one of these. So I am going to go ahead and do this watermelon. And the one thing that I have not addressed are the tomatoes. So this is my tomato box and I am going to go through here and decide what tomatoes I am going to pre-sprout because I am tomato sad right now whenever I go into my garden I just I'm not happy about the tomato situation we are in July and yeah things need to change so no bemoaning my situation taking things into my own hands if things don't work out in my garden this year if my garden is a, a flop it won't be for not trying all right you guys i hope if you're having any issues in your garden that you will do the same just figure out what you can do to remedy it and at least you've tried catch you guys soon i came out here to give the girls some ice in a bowl and I find myself instead pulling up garlic. Well, not instead. I did give them their iced water. These are pretty small. I mean, they're not. Yeah, they're small. <laughs> they're pretty small. These are the ones from Trader Joe's and um, that's about the size. Trader Joe's and Whole Foods. Wow, now this one is teeny tiny. That one doesn't look. Oh. I shouldn't be pulling these, you know why? Because I don't have a place to. I don't have a designated place to dry them. I have an idea of where I'm going to put them, but it's not set up. So. Oh. Oh. Oops, oh man, oh man, again, 
I'm gonna have to get this shovel for this spot right here. So, these are them. Uh, this is, well, no, this one is bigger. This is probably the biggest one. Oh, it smells great though. And this is probably the smallest one that's teeny tiny. Okay, well, I'm gonna leave those there. It is so hot, you guys. Um, I'm kind of excited to have pulled these out because I can't wait to put some other stuff in here. I have to think about how I'm gonna amend this soil because I don't know. These did okay, but the other beds, I'm just a little bit I have my doubts. I, I'm just worried that things aren't growing very well. Seeds aren't coming up very well. I think I'm going to amend with bone meal and blood meal. And I'm not going to put any more of the Kellogg's soil, which was my favorite. I have some topsoil. I'm going to see if I can't mix that with what's in here. And then amend with blood and bone meal. And see what happens. So we still have these over here to pull. Some of them look like they're ready. I'm going to give them a little while longer. I think I've heard two or three of the bottom leaves. When two or three of the bottom leaves are dried up, which this one has one, two, three. This one has one, two, three. We'll see. I'm hoping that these are a little bit better. Uh, and by better, I mean larger in size. Ooh, I've got to go inside. Oh, I was looking at this just now as I was watering it. With this netting on it, you can you know, pretty much, you can clearly see how this whole area, all the onions are gone. Damaged are gone, except for right over there. And on this half, there's still some, not garlic, onions. They're still young. They need to grow some more. But you can see that I've lost a lot over here. Those birds. Here's a couple of 18-day radishes. Took closer to 30 days, but it's okay. The mister likes them. So a couple of nights ago, I came out and, well, what I did a couple of nights ago was, because I had to pull up all these onions, I planted two uh, tomato plants. I've never planted them before. I think they're called Goliath bush. And then I put some Swiss chard over there because none of my Swiss chard is coming up, the ones I planted by seed. And then I thought, Elena, you're supposed to put black plastic down. So then I had to lay the plastic I had to move all the straw, lay the plastic down, and make sure I cut the holes in the right place and just put it over these plants. Then I put the straw back, and I did that last night. <sighs> so today I came out and I laid the plastic on these two beds. This is where the garlic was. I have to show you guys the garlic. Um, yeah, so I laid these two beds down, and I think I'm going to put... Um, squash things here um, I'm not sure exactly what yet I know my pumpkins are gonna go probably on this one 
and over there I'm not a hundred percent sure what I'm gonna put there uh, but that is about it I gave the girls some fresh water and I just turned on the mister for them something that uh, is in my plans but I don't believe I've shared any of that information with you guys yet is getting bees and I may have talked about honeybees but I am talking about um, mason bees and uh, leaf cutter bees that are a lot better pollinators um, of course I still want honey bees because I want honey but for now I'm thinking about other types of bees and I was surprised a few days ago to find that I have some bees in my garden and I have been researching them. Let me show you. There's one hole and you can't really see here but there's another hole right there and there's one right there. I was wondering what's making such a big hole. I thought they were ants, but I, the hole was too big. Well, they are ground-dwelling bees. Oh, here's one. Let's see if she will. I just watched one go into her nest. And what they do is they burrow a hole, a deep hole, and they make branches off, you know, to the left, to the right. And then they put uh, their egg then they lay some, put some food, and then they cover it up. And then they proceed to another branch of the nest, and they keep doing that till it's full, and then they die. It's very short-lived, uh, this disturbance. And I did have some in this bed, and then today I saw some flying around looking for, hey, where's our hole? I felt kind of bad, but I don't want them in the bed. And, um, they will just stay there till spring, and then in spring, these babies will be born and come out and repeat the same process. I don't know why I have them here this year, and I never had them before, but it's okay. They're excellent pollinators. Oh, I see one. I hope she didn't fly away. I just saw one poking her nose out right here. There she is. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Alright, I'm back. Um, we have been inside for quite a while recuperating from our time outside in the sun. It is brutal. So let's do dinner together. Um, let's make this whole chicken. I am going to season it with onion powder, black pepper, salt, smoked paprika, turmeric, and uh, some saffron. I'm just going to rub it all over um, with some butter, I think. And then I'll put it in the instant pot and I'll bring you back when I get to that point. All right, so here's our chicken. It's well seasoned and I'm gonna put it into the instant pot. My instant pot has about three quarters cup of water in it. You could use chicken broth, but I did not wanna open a jar just for three quarters cup. So let's put it in. Usually, let's see, uh, the formula that I follow for chicken is uh, six minutes per pound. I don't think this chicken was five pounds. No, this chicken is, it's a small chicken. I think it's maybe four pounds, maybe a little under. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it for, let's see. Yeah, I'll just do it for Mm, I'll just go ahead and do 25 pounds. Let's round up to 25 pounds. And after that, I'm gonna just pop it in the oven for a little bit just to crisp up the skin. I usually do this recipe in the oven, but I don't wanna keep the oven on that long <laughs> today. It is too hot. So I'm gonna make it in here and then uh, crisp it up in the oven. I had some broccoli 
left uh, this is our broccoli that we grew I thought I would throw that in there with the uh, radishes probably shouldn't be probably should be a little bit more spread out in order to not steam it but it, yeah we have a small oven and you know what I might do hold on okay so I decided to do the broccoli on the stovetop and that way I have more room to spread these radishes out so we're gonna put some olive oil uh, some garlic salt pepper mix it all up and pop it in the oven okay I decided to cut these up a little smaller that way they can cook faster I have my oven set to 400 degrees and um, I'm going to start with 10 minutes. As I've mentioned before, my RV oven has a mind of its own. If it needs more time, I'll just do it in 5 minute increments. But we'll start with 10 minutes. Okay, so radishes are in the oven. Broccoli is waiting to be cooked here on the stovetop. Chicken is done. Uh-oh, hold on. I had to vent it. Remember I told you guys I like my other Instant Pot better? Okay. There's our chicken. I am going to put it in a dish that I can pop into the oven as soon as the um, radish is finished. I decided to make some gravy for the chicken. My hubby loves gravy. So here is dinner. The chicken turned out great. The gravy could have been a little bit thicker. We love broccoli and it's exciting to be eating our own homegrown broccoli. The potatoes, well they're not potatoes, the radishes are not really like potatoes. They're kind of waterlogged. Didn't matter how long I cooked them. I mean I think they were in the oven about 35-40 minutes and they are still Mm, they did get soft, but they, like I said, kind of waterlogged. Uh, but uh, I just put some salt and I put some butter, and my hubby will eat it because he eats just about anything. I'm going to eat it too, but I probably won't make it again. All right, you guys, we'll see you in the next video. Have a great evening. Hey you guys, it is late and it is dark <laughs> in this kitchen, but I just wanted to show you what I'm making for dessert. These are some strawberries that were on their last leg, so I just cut them up and put them in this bowl. I just sprinkled some sugar on it and I'm going to let it reduce or release its juices and then I'm going to show you the next step to this super simple dessert. putting hubby's breakfast together. It's pretty simple. He likes plain oatmeal. Just a little sugar. I even offered to put some cinnamon in it. He doesn't want anything in it. Put that there. And now I'm going to whip some cream. Um, I think that's enough. I probably should be using a deeper container but we're gonna run with this let's just tidy up here for a second I'm gonna put some 
hold on. Okay, just making sure <laughs> this is what I think it is. It is confectioner sugar or powdered sugar. I usually like to put some vanilla in there also, but I'm not going to bother with vanilla tonight. Okay. Let's hope this is not too shallow a dish. I think it'll work. say it's good. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's put this dessert together. It's pretty simple. strawberries. <laughs> it's not pretty. But it's tasty. One second. It's kind of hard to put it together when I'm looking. I'm doing it through the phone's camera. This is um, a vanilla, a balsamic vinegar. And it might sound strange to be putting this on this dessert, but it is so good. When we were in the store tasting different vinegars, and we tasted this one because it sounded interesting to me. The girl in the store said, oh, you have to try it on whipped cream and strawberries. And so it's become one of our favorites. All right, I'm gonna bring this into the mister so he can enjoy it. I'm signing off and I'll catch you guys in the next one.